Okay, good afternoon, uh, Year 12 Psychologists. So, uh, welcome back. Hope you had a good half term. Managed to enjoy uh, sunshine. Um, today, we're going to be looking at the cognitive approach to treating depression, specifically CBT, which is cognitive behavioural therapy. And so, just going to go over the work that was set on Monday, just to make sure everyone's happy. Um, so there's a review task on Seneca. Uh, we're going to be building on that each week, um, kind of going back over things that we've done to kind of keep that ongoing revision going, so make sure that is completed. Um, you've all taken your pictures of the work and, and sent our team, so thank you for that. Some really excellent work. Everyone seems to be keeping on top of stuff, which is great. Um, today we're going to be looking at CBT specifically, okay, so the cognitive approach to treating uh, depression, cognitive behavioural therapy. Um, so by now you should have done your kind of reading um, from the textbook, also done your reading uh, annotations and things um, in uh, the booklet, as well as really uh, by now having done your uh, sort of six mark uh, model answer for outline CBT as a treatment of depression, which I would like to see pictures of so I can have a look at and do some comments live on Teams uh, when they're ready uh, for, for next week. So don't worry if you haven't done the six mark question just yet. Um, if you've just done the reading, that's absolutely fine. Um, this video is going to focus mainly on the evaluation, okay? And just like last week's, uh, or the week before, just like the last video, we're going to focus on the skill of kind of reading, you know, evaluation of the textbook and various sources, and then creating your own. Really thinking about not just choosing the evaluation that might be the, the shortest or the easiest, but really thinking about how you're going to link those pieces of evaluation together, because ultimately. You know we're planning for 16 mark essays and that's why you've got um, obviously your um, outline evaluate CBT is a treatment approach question uh, to do an essay plan for that and you really just to emphasize the importance of thinking about what pieces of evaluation you're going to use but also how you're going to link them together and I'm going to pay particular attention to that today. Um, of course we've got our weekly Q&A uh, 10 a.m. this Friday um, and yeah, we'll put some more information about that I think tomorrow what I'll do is trying to get you guys to kind of uh, prepare some questions. Okay, just so we've got um, you know some some sort of material to use, so we can get a bit more of a discussion going. Um, but today, yeah, like I said, we're going to focus on the evaluation then um, for this particular topic. So we go straight into that. Okay, yeah, here we go. All right, so I'm not going to go through all of this. You've done your uh, reading you've done, this is in your booklet as well, which you should have read as well, but I'll pick up on a few, a few key ideas, but I want to focus this video really on the evaluation, which is more difficult. So you know that CBT is based on the cognitive approach, okay, focusing on thought processes, which aims to kind of change these thought processes. And looking at our cognitive approach to explaining depression, we know that there's this kind of cycle, okay, the uh, VEX trial that we looked at. What we're trying to do is try and break that cycle by challenging uh, the irrational thoughts and the irrational beliefs, um, the irrational negative thoughts and the irrational negative beliefs that a person suffering with depression may have. Um, we can see here this kind of sort of tri triangle here as well in terms of CBT, tackling thoughts, the emotions, how we feel, and the behaviours. Okay, remember it is a cognitive behavioural therapy. So there are aspects of this that challenge thoughts and thinking. There are aspects of this that will challenge behaviours, okay, and they come together. As a therapy. So um, I asked you to write a six mark question for this and there's a couple of options here for this. You could focus your energy on explaining just Beck's cognitive therapy. That is one type of CBT. So CBT is kind of like the umbrella term. Beck's cognitive therapy um, is one example. So you could focus your answer purely on that and make sure you elaborate, you get examples, etc. You've got enough material here to do that. But the key elements there being really identifying the irrational beliefs, challenging them, and looking at um, behavioural elements and any dysfunctional behaviours that the patient may be suffering with and trying to alter those and provide uh, tools and, and tasks to do to challenge those and develop more adaptive behaviours and more adaptive uh, thinking and thought processes. A second example is, so a second type of CBT is Ennis's REBT, so the Ennis's Rational Emotional Behavioural Therapy. The aim here then is to challenge more about the beliefs and the irrational beliefs uh, that the past person has, and the individual reacts to the events in a way, a healthy way. So, if we go back to Ennis's explanation, it's about the activating event, the belief, and the consequence, and there's an extended aspect to that in terms of um, 
how that is challenged. Okay. Um, so you see here there is to his model he adds uh, the ABC model. Ellis adds D and E. Okay, and D stands for this, uh, dispute, and E stands for the effect. And it all ties in together. Okay. So that's the kind of basis of the therapy. If you've got any questions about that, please, please do get onto Teams and ask, ask away. And in fact, maybe we'll get some questions prepared in advance uh, for everybody to ask in our Q&A on Friday. So now I want to look specifically at the evaluation. And in the last video that I made about evaluation, I was really emphasising the importance of, yes, there's lots of really good evaluation in the textbook, but let's have a read of it first. Make sure we understand it. Make sure we pick it apart. Make sure we challenge it. And think about it before we do any writing at all. Think about, read all of the evaluation that's there and available, and you'll see that at the bottom of the link in your in your uh, booklets, you've got additional links, so you can use those additional links okay, to make to look at additional um, evidence, research, evaluation. Okay. So when we're evaluating treatments, we need to think about the effectiveness and the appropriateness. It's a good kind of model for us to think about in terms of evaluating treatments, and of course. A good start, really, if you know, if we imagine we're writing a 16 uh, mark essay, is to provide some support for how good the therapy is. Is it effective? Does it work? So that's what we've got here at the top here. Um, our effectiveness um, pieces, or piece of research here. And what I've actually done here is, if I just get the textbook up, um, I've taken this research support. And I really thought about that in detail because actually there's some contradictory evidence here. This is all written in one kind of point, evidence explained. But there's a lots of ways you could use this and write in your own way. You might want to have this as a point, evidence explained, counterpoint. You use this counter research um, to, to have a, a piece of evaluation. What I've chosen to do is actually, well, I think there's enough here for me to elaborate myself and actually take this up and divide this into two separate evaluative paragraphs and that's what I've done here so this is what I'm talking about in terms of really reading the evaluation picking it apart challenging it thinking about how you can use it um, in your own writing <clears throat> so we've got one strength here um, is research support for the success of Ellis's REBT okay, we've got that 90% success rate um, that was claimed we've also got for example uh, Kush Pizzatal, um 2013 so a relatively good recent study Conduct a meta-analysis. We know that meta-analyses are really useful because they combine lots and lots of data. Okay? They found that superior treatments and no treatment. There's evidence, therefore, type right, therefore lends support to CBT as an effective treatment for depression. We could extend that further if we wanted to and think, well, it's only a it's only a comparison to no treatment. We do we could possibly look at more evidence to you know, com for comparisons against other treatments, but you'll see that I'll, I'll bring that in later. <clears throat> However, one weakness is that research is mixed, so that was picked up in the textbook. And in fact, Ellis posits the CBT was not always effective. For example, Ellis 2001 suggested that CBT may not always be effective, for, effective because some patients did not put their revised beliefs into action. This not only questions the effectiveness of the therapy, but also the, its appropriateness. Now, so it's important to note at this point that effectiveness and appropriateness are related to one another. Effectiveness is all about how good the therapy is. Does it work? Appropriateness is all about is it accessible and appropriate and applicable to all patients with CBT. So they are kind of linked together. Furthermore, Kukin and um, Syracos, um suggest that thera therapist competence also appears to explain a significant amount of the variation in CBT outcomes. So how effective it is. This suggests that although REBT, so we're looking specifically there, the type of CBT may be effective, there are other factors relating to both client and therapist that may limit its effectiveness. I've also added some extra elaboration here. Yeah? As a result, it is imperative that psychiatric professionals are well trained to implement the therapy and patients have the tools to implement what they have learned outside the psychiatric setting in order for it to be effective. Maybe we should add that in. So 
So really, you know, this is a demonstration here that when, when you're reading a source and you're, you know, reading some evaluation, spend the time. Okay, spend the time to pick it apart and really think about it in detail. Not only are you putting the skills into practice of, you know, really elaborating on some research, you're much more likely to remember this for future reference if you are actively working on it yourself and not just writing from the textbook. Okay, on to appropriateness then. Uh, one weakness in terms of appropriateness is that CBT appears to be more suitable for some patients than others. Okay. If we have a, a treatment that's highly appropriate, it will be applicable, accessible, and effective for all patients with CBT. Here we start to see with, C, uh, with depression, sorry. Here we start to see that CBT has a kind of variation in that in terms of its appropriateness. There appears uh, to be, another type of, correct? Uh, there appears to be some individual differences, okay, in terms of the appropriateness. For example, CBT appears to be less suitable for people who have high levels of irrational beliefs that are both rigid and resistant to change. Remember, CBT is all about challenging those irrational beliefs, okay, challenging those irrational thought processes. So if there's someone who has those real rigid and beliefs that are resistant to change, they're going to find it very difficult to, to even engage with CBT at all. So not really appropriate for that particular type of patient. CBT also appears to be less suitable in situations where individuals are experiencing high levels of stress that cannot be resolved, affecting some patients' accessibility to CBT. And we'll pick up on this in this final evaluation as well. If they're suffering really badly with depression and they've got lots of stress and other comorbid issues that just accessing CBT that is quite challenging and cognitively effortful, which we'll mention now, um, it's going to be difficult for them to access that. Again, affecting the appropriateness. Furthermore, Ellis points out that the cognitive effort involved in CBT may be off-putting for some patients, limiting its appropriateness. A limitation of CBT, therefore, so we're elaborating here, we're explaining here, is, that, is the fact that individual differences have a negative impact on the access accessibility of this treatment, limiting both effectiveness and appropriateness of CBT as a cognitive approach to treating depression. So just bringing it all together with that final piece of explanation at the end. Now I put this final one in purple because we're saying, hang on a minute, CBT is highly effective. We said that at the start of our evaluation, 90% success rate, but what about other treatments? And here, I put it in purple because it's both a strength really and a, both a weakness and a strength really. Um, if we combine therapies, they can be highly effective. Okay, so this is a really useful piece of evaluation. And if you think about the structure okay, of a um, 16 mark essay, I have mentioned here at the top this study, which is hard to pronounce, <laughs> but I've also mentioned it at the end, which kind of, kind of gives it a nice kind of um, well-rounded piece of evaluation, referring to both at the start and at the end of my evaluation. So that's a really useful, you know, again, thinking about the order of your evaluation, thinking about the structure of your evaluation, if you were to write this as a 16 mark essay. So important there. So further evaluation of CBT is provided by the notion that although CBT is not appropriate, another type thing, uh, for all patients, other treatments are available. Indeed, the most popular treatment for depression is the use of antidepressants, such as SSRIs. SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, and um, we will be looking at these in more detail when we look at the treatment for OCD. Uh, when we look at OCD, we'll be taking a biological approach into explaining OCD, which is really interesting, uh, looking at neurotransmitters, and we'll, therefore the treatment targets um, those neurotransmitters, specifically serotonin, um, and we'll learn more about um, how those work um, in due course. So SSRIs, antidepressants, are really, really highly effective and very popular. For example, drug therapies have the strength of requiring less effort on the part of the patient. You know, CBT is highly effortful. It's challenging. You are challenging your beliefs, your thoughts, processes. Drug therapies, far less effortful. You just need to remember to take your medication. And therefore, may be more accessible to a broader range of patients compared to CBT. Furthermore, drug therapies can be used alongside psychotherapies, such as CBT. This may be useful as a distressed patient may find it easier to manage the demands of CBT um, while being on a course of antidepressants. In other words, if you have a patient who is 
really quite severely depressed and is struggling to even get out of bed, there's no way they're going to be able to access CBT. So having a drug therapy that, enable, that lifts their mood, that enables to deal with the, you know, the mood aspect, motivation aspect, etc., can then increase their likelihood of then seeking other treatments such as CBT to then challenge the negative thoughts that they may have and belief systems. So a combination is often highly effective. For example, we refer back to this study, the review by Christmas et al. Uh, 2013, found that CBT was especially effective when combined with drug therapy. Uh, this suggests that using both CBT and drug therapy might be the best option for most patients, leading to a highly effective and appropriate treatment for depression by combining the two approaches. Now, if we take that as a whole, in terms of the evaluation, it's got a really good structure. You divide it up into effectiveness and appropriateness. We have started off with some research, which is always a good start, some research to support the therapy. Then we go in to start challenging the weaknesses and bring it together by saying, hold on a minute, we know CBT is good, but it's even better when we combine it with drug therapies. You may want to lead into that in terms of a conclusion, a final conclusion, bringing this all together. Okay, if you, again, if you're going to plan your essay. Okay, so we'll just go back quickly to the work that was set. Okay, so that's the evaluation there. Really paying attention to effectiveness, appropriateness, as well as the structure and how to kind of order your evaluation. Paying particular attention to, you know, the reading that we do should inform how we write our evaluation, but take the time in, in that reading process and challenge it and read it carefully. Don't just copy from the textbook. Um, so you've got your um, essay plan to do. We'll discuss those in the Q&A. Uh, the video will be going up shortly. And yeah, of course, we've got our Q&A um, on Friday at 10 a.m. Okay, so if you've got any questions, jump on Teams. Um, if not, I look forward to chatting with you all um, at 10 a.m. on this Friday. Thanks very much.